Hey, Boo. I know that some of you, maybe quite a few of you, have difficulty with trusting that you have your desire fulfilled, even though it is already embedded in your having chosen that particular desire from the state of being or state of consciousness that you were in when you had that desire and how the tendency is to keep looking outside for it and wondering why it isn't there. So I want you to play with the idea of thinking of your desire as or the whole process of manifesting, of bringing it forth into your experience as a crock pot. So stay with me and you'll see where we're going here, okay? So when you turn on your crock pot in the morning, you put all your ingredients in, everything's already set up for that, and you're ready to go to work, so you turn on the crock pot and you know that when you get home six hours later, eight hours later, whatever it is, there is going to be waiting for you a wonderful supper. And you're, you're at work and the, the thoughts, the, the whole sensory experience of what that is going to be like, knowing it's all ready for you, is filling your mind. You trust that when you walk in the door at the end of the day and you're tired and you're frazzled, you will be greeted by an amazing aroma wafting from the kitchen of a meal that is already prepared for you. It's ready. We love that idea that when we get in, there's nothing more we have to do other than grab our bowl or our plate and the spoon and put it on the plate and there is dinner. It's a done deal. And we trust that. So that is a very natural feeling of trusting. And as you're driving back or on the, you know, commuting back from your, from work, you're already salivating at the thought of what that meal is going to taste like. You already can smell it. You're using all your senses. And this is exactly what it is with manifesting. I mean, you can even taste it on your tongue, that feeling of the warmth and the texture of the food. So it's already set. And it's the same thing. It's absolutely the same thing with whatever your desire is. Now, all right, you're probably saying, well, that's fine as far as a crock pot itself is concerned because we know how it works, we know what's gonna come. But when it's something that we want, a relationship, that we want the money, we want a particular thing, right? Um, a new gaming chair, whatever it is that you wanna bring into your physical existence, but you feel has been out of reach. It's nonetheless, already out there. It's already happening in the in your full reality, in your full infinite state of being. And if there's stress around it, if you keep looking around to see why you don't have it, you are not fully in the state of being it, of having it. 
And the more you look, the more you are, Neville Goddard call it digging up the sea. You don't want to be doing that because you're allowing too many things to start to worry you or make you feel afraid that it's not going to happen or that something is going to, some other person or experience is going to get in the way of it. There's nothing to get in the way of it. It's there. Once that has come into your mind. Remember, Neville said, God speaks to us. This is your larger self. God speaks to us through the medium of imagination. And we can also say that my desires are God's desires. God always hears me. So there is no hesitation, no doubt, no obstruction to having it. But it does take the faith in saying, I chose this, I want this, or I am this, if it's a um, job that you want, a role that you want to play, uh, an experience that you want to have. That's all there for you. There's nothing standing in the way of it except what you choose to inhabit. So if you have, if you're jockeying between the two and your, and your smaller self, the ego-based self or the lacking self is, at, is fighting for dominance with the, with your greater self that has what you want, it's not going to happen. You're constantly creating a roadblock for it. a house divided it's against itself cannot stand the space for the desire can't fully contain it because it's being pushed around. It's whatever way you want to see that. But there is, you only have to decide you want it and that you have it. And in pure consciousness that is beyond the physical senses. In the greater ground of pure awareness, awareness of being is God. It's really like a sort of cosmic iceberg, if you will, right? With this, we only see that one eighth that's on the surface, which you could compared to, it's liken it to what the external world looks like to you. So you're only seeing that, that little piece, but seven eighths, the depth is under the surface or in terms of awareness, it's beyond what the visible realm, the externally visible realm to the external eyes are taking, can take in or that the mind, the limited small mind, can fathom, can understand, can comprehend. So the idea of it not being there, that's like saying that it's going to be nothing in the crock pot or deciding that that the electric power went out while you were while you were at work and and it never cooked or that you walked out and forgot to flip the switch so it never went it never it never got it never got warmed up it never cooked but it wouldn't be it's it's deciding it's not running from what you want So it's like wanting something and then being afraid to have it or feeling guilty that it's like a guilty pleasure the way some people feel about coffee or chocolate or cognac or something like that. It's, none of, it's not a guilty type of pleasure. 
It's something you are worthy of, something you deserve to have and that you already have. So it's knowing that that delicious feast is going to be, is there for you. You unlock the door, walk in and spoon it out. And keep in mind the ancient Hindu prayer that says, Oh Lord, oh divine, oh infinite, lead me from the unreal to the real, the unreal, the shadow world, the external world, that one eighth that's visible above the surface. Lead me from the unreal to the real, the pure light that illumines everything, the light without a visible source. It illumines everything in the universe that can, it cannot ever be extinguished. The power would seem to go out, but that light will remain. the inner light that illumines everything, including you, above all you. Lead me from the unreal to the real, from darkness, shadow world illusion to light, the inner light, from death to immortality from death, that's the death of the ego, or from the death of the, the waking dead, the zombie. It's, it's sometimes called that, that what we, that walking around in the meat suit is actually being in the crypt, in the coffin, it's in the casket. It's not the true life, the life that is within that is eternal. So it's from death to immortality, from the waking deadness of ignorance. It's the ignorance of your true nature as the operant power, as pure awareness, pure consciousness, to the immortality of knowing that you are a facet of the cosmic diamond that is God, the diamond that is God, and you are a facet of that. I and my Father are one, and the Father is greater. From death to immortality, your immortal divine self beyond the waking, sleeping, and dream states. Rest there. In that knowing, just breathe into that, breathing from the mind into the heart, into your own center, where that wisdom resides. And let go of how things appear, let go of what the conditioned mind expects, and be prepared to receive more, a greater feast than you ever could have expected. Love you, boo. And if this resonated with you, do the things like comment, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you in the next video.